Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be servicing a still 86C petrol blower. So here we are then in the workshop, it's absolutely freezing cold. But if the weather was any good, I wouldn't be in here, would I? I'd probably be outside doing some work and trying to earn some money. Yet, yeah, I'm in here today, we're going to service this piece of equipment, um, make sure it's in tip-top condition for when we need to use it again. Now, I don't know how you keep your service records at home, however, we have most of ours on the PC and we can access them at any time. But I am old school and I bought a folder with me to show you that I do have some bits and pieces and I put on there little snippets of information about these machines. So if ever we're, we're stuck, I can just quickly reference my folder if I'm down in the workshop and it's in here. It basically says in there, still SH86C. We'll put the serial number in there if we've got one and we'll put in when it was purchased, when it was serviced and, and so on and so forth. So we've just got a little bit of information to hand if ever we need it. I've got one of those forms on my website, www.jimmythemower.com. I'll put the link in the description below so you can go on there and download one of those if you want. There's loads of other information available. You can put hours in there. If you run big mowers like us, the Ransoms Parkways and stuff, they have hours meters on. So you service them at 50 hours, 100, 150, 200, etc. With these sort of small machines, if we're servicing them and, I don't know, using them on a regular basis, we service every couple of months, something like that. Six months, maybe every 12 months. This is actually our spare. Now, I know it looks a little bit grubby, <laughs> right? But I've got one down here. If you're using one, this one is actually six months newer than this one. And that's what they look like when they're in the van. And they're being used on a daily basis by a ground crew for collecting leaves, blowing leaves and whatever else we have to do. So even though this one's older at 12 months and it looks a bit tatty to you, it's in pretty good nick for a commercial machine. So let's have a look then at how we service it. Before we service it then, let's have a look at the little bits and pieces we've got. We've got the still spanner that comes with it with a little torque bit on the end. This will undo everything on this machine that you need to really. Uh, they do provide a little screwdriver as well with these. So we've got some needle nose pliers. You'll see we use those for fishing out the fuel filter. Some normal pliers, just in case the fuel filter's on a bit too tight. A screwdriver, because you never know when you need one. A brush for cleaning the air filter. A Sharpie for marking up boxes. And the service parts, we've got a spark plug, fuel filters and air filters. Now, we'll put all the numbers in the description below, so if you've got the, this exact model, you'll be able to copy those over and order the, the, the things that you need. Uh, however, there are some variants, so if you've got somebody you deal with on a regular basis, you can put in either the, the number of the machine on there or the serial number of the machine, and it will tell them on their system exactly what you need to order. Now, before we start, we'll see if we can get this, we'll get the pipe off and we'll shorten the machine, make it easier to work with. So we put this in the top and we turn the collar around, he says. That should depress there. Oh, it doesn't help that my hands are so cold. Right, let me just have a look over the top. There we go. That's that done. Right, that's the pipe off. We'll have a look through the pipe. Right, I can see you. I don't know if you can see me. I'll we'll turn it round. Right, that's nice and clear. We don't need to worry about that. It's just a plastic pipe. As long as it's clear, there's no blockages in there. That's great. So now we've reduced the machine down to this size. Makes it a lot easier to work with. Now, before we do anything with these petrol machines normally, we've got an on-off switch on the side. So we can put that down to stop. But... They don't always work, so if you pull that, it still might fire up. So the first thing we do is disconnect the spark plug. It's located on the top. We pull this out, so that's off. Now, the top of that spark plug in there, that little bit slots into there and 
the electrical current flows through the wire. So once we've broken this circuit, there's no way that the machine will fire up. So we're nice and safe to work with it. So let's have a little look down the end. We'll look through in there and just make sure there's no blockages because we do change these over to use them as vacuums. It's set up as a blower at the moment. We're changing around to use as vacuums. If you don't know how to change it around to use as a vacuum, I have done a video all about that. It's only a short one and I'll put a link to the end of it. At, uh, uh, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. So you can see that. Now, we've seen that's clear in there. We can have a look now in this bit because when you use it as a vacuum, all the debris comes up through there, gets chopped up by a small metal blade, forced through and out this way and into the bag. So we just make sure there are no blockages in that bit. If I can remember how to undo it, I think there's a little plastic tab in there, if I remember correctly. There we go, and that's off. We'll lift that out of the way, and then you can see we've got the, the blade inside the impeller, and that's it. It's all freely turning, there's no bother there. There's no debris in it, you can turn it round and shake it out. Nothing will come out, so happy days with that. That's that job done. So now we know it's clear and should be working fine. Disconnected the spark plug. Next thing we can do is uh, have a look at the air filter, I think. We'll have a look at the air filter first. Now the air filter is located on the back and this should be just tight enough to hold it in place. You don't have to go mad when you're screwing it in. And all it does is when your machine is running, it sucks in clean air, comes through this filter. We're working in the summer, there's a lot of dust around, the dust will accumulate around this filter. So we need to filter out those, those particles so they don't get passed through to the engine. So this is the filter on here. We can take that off, it comes off quite easily. Now, this is a new design of filter. The old ones are just basically cloth elements or some paper elements on their side. This is, uh, it's got a rubber seal on the back there, all the way around, and it's just got a, a cardboard element there with some grooves cut in, and that traps everything. It's, it's fairly dirty. It's not bad, but it, it's fairly dirty. So with these, you can clean these filters off because they've got a visible... Um, sort of way of telling if they're, if they're clogged up or not. You can clean them out with a paintbrush and get the little bits and pieces off to clear it through. And then if you've got a compressor, you can also blow them out. Put the compressor in the middle and you blow from the inside out. And you do that and it blows all the dust out and uh, you can pop that on your shelf. And if you ever have a problem with a machine, then you've got an air filter to hand and you can pop that on and you can eliminate that as a problem. So they're always worth hanging on to. And I'm gonna hang on to this one because I've got a brand new one here. And apart from that, we haven't got any more in stock. So I'll put that over to one side. And when we've got a rainy day, we can clean that up and we can, um, we can put that as a spare on the shelf then. So let's have a look at the new air filter. So there's the new air filter. You can see, nice and clean, shiny. No dirt in the uh, cardboard elements as we turn it round. It's all lovely as it, as it is. Brand new out of the packet. So with these, they just fit back on. So simple, so simple. They just fit back on. <laughs> so simply says he gets it on backwards. So simple. There you go. It's on there. Fits in. And that's it, exactly how it goes. We just put the plastic cover now. This bolt is retained within the plastic cover so we just pop the plastic cover on the bolt goes through there and into the thread the other side so that's that we'll screw that back on you can hear it drag in there i think that's it, that's tight enough. That's as tight as you need to go. You don't need to go any tighter than that at all. That's it, it's just on there. It won't fall off. There's a long thread on there, it won't fall off. But always important to have that clean air element in there. This one here, as I say, we'll clean that up over, well, maybe today when I finish this video, clean that up and we'll put that on the shelf as a spare. You never know when they come in handy. Now, 
Next, we can do the fuel filter. We've got that on the back. It should be empty in there. It is, thank goodness. Now, the fuel filter's a bit of a pain. They sit in there, they're on the end of a pipe, and basically, when you pour your fuel in, they'll get sucked up through that filter, through the pipe, and down into the engine. And it's designed to keep the fuel clear and stop any contaminants getting into the engine. Exactly the same as the air filter, but for fuel. So, we always use these little bottles, as I told you before. Um, I'm sure you've seen me my video on how to mix two-stroke fuel up. We always use these, and we use these because we know we've got fresh fuel in there, and there's a, you can visibly check when you pour the fuel in whether it's clear or not. You can tell in there. We use the still oil because it's got a built-in stabiliser as well, and it will last longer in these little bottles. So that's your first line of defence is having this clean fuel in there and then your last line of defense is this fuel filter in here now they're a bit of a pain to get out sometimes so if I tilt this forward I'm gonna have a fish around in here many happy hour fishing around for one of these here we go will I be I no not quite I thought I struck lucky then and got it out first time not quite oh second time lucky there you go there's a the fuel filter on the end of the pipe now these pipes could do with being about an inch, maybe two inches longer. As we know, two inches makes all the difference. So if you let go, it pops back in and you're back to square one. So you need to fish around in there. Sometimes you can't hook it out with this and you've got to get the, the pliers in, involved and get the needle nose pliers in and pull it out. But there you go, we've got it. Now we'll undo that. For goodness sake, as soon as you've undone it, you can see there's fuel leaking out put the new one on i've been silly here i haven't opened the packet which i should have done before and prepped it because if you lose that pipe you've got nothing to hook around and pull it back out with so you're in there with the needle nose pliers and you spend a uh, many a happy hour eh, fishing around for those right it just pushes on like that and that's our new filter in place now, now I've done that tricky job, I can talk to you a little bit about the filter. As you can see, we emptied it out and there was a bit of spillage on there from the fuel. With the air filter, we can visibly see inside and outside of the filter and we can see if there's any damage to the filter or anything that's sort of beyond repair. However, with these fuel filters, you cannot see inside. We don't know if this is 90% full, 10% full, we haven't got a clue. They're a couple of pounds, if that, so they are a disposable item. There's no point in keeping that on the shelf because we don't know how good it is. Um, we might put it in and cause problems with another machine. So always keep a couple of these. As you can see, I ordered two. I always order an extra one. We've got box fulls of them, but you never know when you might need them. All it takes is a you know, a couple of dusty weeks and the, the stuff gets in there and it's a, it's a pain, it really is a pain. So you need to make sure that they're always clean and you've always got a spare one accessible. And this one here is for the bin, I'm afraid. So I'll just pop that in there and that's out of the way. And we've got no danger of using that one again. So that's the fuel filter changed. I'll put the lid back on and we'll turn it round now and we'll remove the spark plug. Okay then, so let's remove the spark plug. To remove the spark plug, we've already removed the cap on there with the wire on, so we know that's out of the way and we're working with a safe machine. And all we have to do is remove the plug from out of there. Now, you have a still spanner with you. There's two ends on there, the larger end and the smaller end. And I'm presuming the smaller the engine, the smaller the plug, and it should be this one that fits in. Just have a tap. There you go. And that undoes it. Just they're only, once you've put them in with your fingers, just the slightest twist on the spanner and that's as tight as they need to be. Now we'll take this plug out. Right, that's the plug out and that's over there. There's the plug. Now we know this plug's a good plug because the machine was working quite well before we, uh, before we took it out. What we're doing today is maintenance. It's not repairing stuff. We're not trying to look for faults or whatever. We're just maintaining the machine. So hopefully it won't develop any faults or if it does, we can already eliminate these things. We know that there's a clean air filter in there. We know there's a clean fuel filter and we know there's a new spark plug. 
Now, the spark plug that we've got in there is actually a Bosch USR 4AC. Now, these are becoming quite difficult to get sometimes. For some reason, I don't know why, but we're changing over to NGK spark plugs. We almost always use NGK. There's a lot of them up on the shelf there above me. Um, we use these, and the cross-reference number for this is CMR6H, so CMR6H, and that's the spark plug that goes through. Now, when you select a spark plug, you don't just want one that's like it. It's got to be exactly the same. It's no good just saying, well, it looks it's all right, that'll do. There's a lot of cross-referencing websites out there, um, and a lot of them want to sell your plugs which I always find a bit dubious because they always seem to throw one up and it's not always the one that I'll find on other cross-referencing sites. So if anybody's got a good website for cross-referencing spark plugs, if you could put it in the description below, that would help me out enormously, thanks, and also help out anybody else who's watching the video as well. But I know with these plugs, because I've used them many times before, with these machines, that this is the correct one. It's stamped on the top, CMR6H. Okay, so we look at it together, we look, the thread are the same length, it's the same height, so it's not going to be any different there, and the size of the nut is exactly the same as well. So we can put this in, but before we put, pop that back in, I'll just tell you what we'll do with this. We know that spark plug was working, and a lot of the time we have a problem with the machine, and the reason why it doesn't work is A, fuel, or B, spark. So with that being a working spark plug, we can pop that in there, and again, put it to one side, and we can clean it up, knowing that it's a working one. And if we ever have a problem with a machine, and we suspect it may be the spark plug, we can take the spark plug out, put this used one in, which we know works, and fire the machine up again. And if it doesn't cure the problem, well, then we know to look elsewhere. However, if it does cure the problem, then bingo, and we need to order a new plug. So I'm just going to write used on this box so we know exactly what it is. So that's just put used on there, and we can just pop that over there, and we can clean that up another day, and uh, we've got ourselves a spare spark plug. Might get us out of a hole for a day or two until the new one arrives. Now, we'll put this spark plug in, and put this spark plug in, tilt this over a bit and try and show you on camera what we do. It sits in there. Now, when you put in a spark plug in, people tend to get a bit over-enthusiastic, and they're pushing them down or trying to thread them in, and you can see how gently that's gone in. These NGK spark plugs have got a special coating on there, which acts as a lubricant, so when you screw it in, it goes in nice and easily. The main thing is to match up the threads. If you want to, you can always turn it backwards and forwards a little bit to make sure that it's located properly because you don't want to strip the threads on there. You want to make sure it's the correct plug for the correct engine. So that's gone in a treat. I'm happy with that. We'll get this spanner on, turn it round, and we just pull it up a little bit. Now it's squeezing a little bit. There's a little compression washer on there and that's that that's as tight as you need to go so that's about a quarter of a turn turn it in with your fingers till it goes in and then about a quarter of a turn on an old spark plug where that compression washer has already been squashed a little bit it's not that much it's about an eighth if that now then we'll put this spark plug cap back on and that's that done so we've done the spark plug we've done the fuel filter we've done the air filter We've done a visual inspection all the way around of the machine. All we really need to do now is put the tube back on the front. We'll put some fuel in, pump it through, and then we can fire it up. So let's have a go at that. Okay then, let's pop the tube back on. We pop it in there. There's arrows on the top that, that line up, so it's pretty foolproof saying that. I still get them on backwards sometimes. You know. Turn that round and that clicks into place. Now that won't undo. So we've got the collar on. That's great. And then we'll put some fuel in here. Undo that. Nice and clean in that tank. I'm getting excited now. Because I'm hoping when I put this fuel in, we'll be able to fire it up and it'll work. Fingers crossed. 
All right, we'll put some fuel in. I won't go crazy and fill it all the way to the top. Just about half a tank will do. Put that in. Put that over there. Have a little clean up round it. Right then, let's see if we can start the machine. Let's turn it round so you can see. We'll pump up the primer. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's normally six. If you're starting it from cold, you just put about six pumps in there to pump the fuel up and through. However, when we disconnected the filter, we saw some fuel dribble out of there, so we need to replace that. So we've done six pumps. I can see there's a little bit coming to the bulb. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, ten on there, that should be enough to pump it through. However, we still might get a little bit of an airlock, so it might fire and then not fire. We'll see how it goes. We'll lift this from, that's down on stop there, so we'll lift that up from stop. We don't want it on full bore because that's just too much, so we put it about halfway and then we'll set the choke, turn the choke round to there, and we should be able to pull this and it go. There we go, <laughs> second pull and away it went. Absolutely great, clean as a whistle, sounds brilliant. What more do you want, eh? We've done it, we bought in a, a blower, we've changed the plug, the filter, the fuel filter, put it all back together, checked inside to make sure there's nothing blocking it up and it's all working perfectly. So that's it, that's back in the truck then and back out to work for it next week. So thanks for watching then guys, I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching them. Please leave me something nice in the comment section below, subscribe if you can, give me the thumbs up and hit that bell and you'll get notified every time we've got a new video out. I'm Jimmy the Mower, I'll catch you on the next one.